August 1989 in Pleasant Grove, Utah, 16-year-old Justin Clegg spent six days home alone, his parents having gone on vacation for the week while his three siblings stayed at their friends' and relatives' homes. What happened to him was disturbing and terrifying. This is a story he told a psychologist who evaluated him. After Justin passed away in 2017, his family decided to release the progress notes taken by the psychologist. Monday, August 14th. I was excited to be alone for the week, the whole house to myself and access to a car. It took some doing, but I talked my parents into letting me stay there by myself. Never again. It was summer vacation, so I woke up late that first morning, alone, about 9 a.m. I think. My parents had left for the airport very early that morning, dropping my two sisters and brother off to their friends' and cousins' houses along the way. It started out like a typical summer day for me. Wake up, eat breakfast, lounge around for a while, then decide what I was going to do that day. A few hours later, I called up my friends to see if they wanted to hang out. After talking to them for a bit, we decided to catch the 7 p.m. movie that night. I don't even remember the movie we watched, but I clearly remember everything that happened when I came home. Like normal, I pulled the car into the garage, got out, and proceeded to walk up the steps and opened the door that led to the mudroom. To my left, leading down to the basement were my sister's rooms, and to my right was the laundry room. As I opened the door, casually walking in, I remember freezing in place, stunned with fear. Coming from the basement was the sound of blaring radio static along with a strange, deep voice I couldn't understand. I assumed it was coming from my sister's stereo, which I knew without a doubt was turned off when I left. I immediately turned around, ran back into the garage, jumped into the car, and sped out of there as fast as I could. My first thought was someone had broken into the house and was downstairs. I quickly decided to go to the nearest payphone and call the police. After calling the police, I drove to the nearby church and waited for the policeman to arrive. As soon as I saw the police car pass the church, I started up the car and began to follow them to my house. Once there, I parked the car out on the street and proceeded to walk up to the policeman. They asked me if I was Justin, to which I replied I was. They asked me to tell them what was going on, so I explained I'd just gotten home from watching a movie with my friends. Upon entering the house, I could hear what sounded like radio static, along with a strange voice coming from the basement, most likely from my oldest sister's room as she was the one with the stereo. I told them I knew for a fact it was not on when I left the house earlier that evening, and I was worried someone had broken in. They told me to wait outside while they searched the house. I opened the garage door and watched them as they took out their weapons and flashlights and walked into the house through the same door I'd gone through. I was still very frightened, so I decided to get into the car and lock the doors while waiting for them. Before getting into the car, I checked the back seat through the window to make sure no one was back there hiding, waiting for me. I'm not sure exactly how long the police officer searched the house, but I'd say about 15 to 20 minutes. As I waited, I kept looking behind me expecting there to be someone in the back seat or someone approaching the car. I breathed a sigh of relief when I saw the officers come out. They looked like they were laughing which helped set my mind at ease. It must mean they found nothing and everything was safe. One of the officers came up to my car's window, tapping on it with his flashlight. As I rolled it down, he said, Everything is fine, young man. The radio was on in the basement, so we turned it off. It was probably just a glitch with the stereo. Call us if you need anything else, but it's safe to go inside. We checked every inch of the house. As I watched them pull away, I remember thinking I should go stay at my cousin's house for the week. They were only 10 minutes away. I ultimately decided I was just being a wimp and really wanted to enjoy my week alone being it was rare I ever got time to myself like this. Tuesday, August 15th. I woke up feeling like crap that morning because I didn't sleep much, if at all. None that I could remember anyways. Every little sound I heard made me jump. It was a long night. As I made my way towards the kitchen, I paused at the top of the stairs that led down to my sister's rooms. A chill went up my spine and an eerie feeling overcame me. As I stood there looking down the dark stairwell, I took note of how completely silent the house was. Part of me was wishing I had in fact gone to my cousin's house last night. 
After eating breakfast, I decided to go back to bed to see if I could get rid of the headache that had come on during breakfast. Must be lack of sleep, I thought. I think I'd been asleep for a few hours when I thought I heard something whisper my name, then the Walkman in my room suddenly turned on. It was very loud, even though it was a few feet away. I heard the strange, deep voice again. I immediately sat up, then backed up into the corner of my bed. After that, I don't remember anything from that day, except for much later. I remember opening my eyes and I was sitting on the couch staring at the TV. It was already dark outside, which meant it was late into the evening. It took me a few minutes to get my bearings. I was so confused and felt like I was in a dreamlike state. What happened to my day? I thought to myself. I got up from the couch, ate something, then went upstairs and went back to bed. Wednesday, August 16th. When I woke up that morning, I was standing in my sister's room, staring at the stereo. I stumbled backwards as I let out a shriek, hitting the wall, then falling down. I had no idea how I ended up in the basement. I laid there on the floor for a while, stunned with fear. All of a sudden, my sister's stereo came blaring on. I quickly sat up against the wall and started trembling. A few seconds later, I heard the voice again, coming out of the stereo. Again, I couldn't understand what it was saying. It sounded almost like chanting. I stood up and ran over to it, then pulled the plug out of the outlet. I then quickly ran upstairs to my bedroom and jumped into bed. As I laid there, my mind started wandering in all different directions. I asked myself out loud, what's happening? Am I losing my mind? I must have fallen back asleep because when I woke up it was late in the afternoon. I could see through my window the sun was in the west and dropping down. As I sat up in my bed I felt horrible. It was like I hadn't slept in days. But I'd been doing nothing but sleeping. It didn't make any sense. I sat there on my bed for hours without moving, just staring at the floor. I eventually got up and went downstairs. I was dying of thirst and hunger so I ate quite a lot and drank half a gallon of water, then went back to bed. Thursday, August 17th. I had the worst nightmare that night. I dreamt I was hiding in my closet watching someone I didn't recognize sleeping in my bed. I looked down and noticed I had a knife in my hand. The person in my bed then sat up and was looking at me. They motioned to me to come out of the closet. As I slowly came out of the closet, I could see the person in my bed was glaring at me with a sinister smile. The person pointed to the wall in my bedroom. I then proceeded to walk over to it. I stood there for a bit, looked down at the knife in my hand, then took the knife and made a deep cut into my arm. Blood flowed out of my arm as it streamed down onto the floor. I dropped the knife, then with my hand, dipped two fingers into the cut on my arm then started writing something on the wall. When I finished writing, I stood there, looking at the wall but couldn't see what I'd written. Suddenly, I heard my sister's stereo come blaring on from the basement. It was then I woke up, jumped up, and fell out of bed. As I looked around, I could see there was a pool of blood on the floor. I looked up in horror as I saw the writing on the wall. In blood, it read, Angelus Mortis. I screamed out loud, what the hell is going on? I looked down at my arm and could see there was a cut that was fairly deep. So I went to the bathroom and bandaged it up. When I went back to my room, I stood there staring at the writing on the wall. I had no idea what the words meant. I began wondering if I was truly awake or not. I couldn't tell what was real or what was not anymore. I looked over at the clock and could see it was 3 p.m. My head was spinning, so I went and laid back down on my bed. Friday, August 18th. I remember my eyes opening. There was heavy breathing and I was standing outside. I jumped back and gasped when I realized where I was at. I was standing outside in our neighbor's backyard, looking through their glass door, and it was the middle of the night. I almost screamed out loud when I looked down and could see I was holding our large kitchen knife. I slowly backed up towards my house and went inside. When I got inside, I put the kitchen knife down on the counter. I stood in the kitchen looking out through the window for a long time. Could have been hours. I'm not sure. I don't remember what I was thinking. I just remember staring out the window into the darkness. 
As it began to get light outside, I made my way to my bedroom, went back to bed, and fell asleep. Saturday, August 19th. I was startled awake to someone yelling out my name in horror. Justin! Justin! Stop! Stop! Stop it! As I came to, I was standing over my youngest sister. She was bleeding profusely and had her arms up in a defensive position. I looked up in utter shock at my right hand. It was holding our kitchen knife. I was ready to strike her again when my father came flying at me from behind, tackling me down to the ground. He removed the knife from my hand and told my mother, Joni, call the police, now. I watched as my mother ran over to the phone on the wall and dialed 911. As she was talking to the police, she looked at me with an utter look of dread on her face. I'll never forget the look she gave me as long as I live. It'll haunt me until the day I die. The two police officers who'd come to our home earlier in the week arrested me and took me to jail. At the end of the conversation, the psychologist asked Justin if he knew what Angelus Mortis meant. Justin's response was, in Latin, Angel of Death. He then asked him what he thought the stereo randomly turning on with the strange voice was. Justin's response was, the Angel of Death. Justin spent the remainder of his life in the state mental institution. As each year passed, he fell further and further into darkness, eventually to the point he no longer communicated or even looked at anyone. He passed away in 2017 from unknown causes. Justin's family moved out of Utah in 1995 to an undisclosed location. For more scary horror stories, please subscribe.